Okay, good evening and welcome. Alright, I got the mighty H string here. All right, so a little bit of playing around there. One thing about black, flat black guitars, they get really dusty. Okay, so, uh, songwriting. Uh, tips I wish I knew when I was starting out. Um, I'm a guitar player who has multiple guitars, ranging from six strings to eight strings, and I have a seven string, and I've got Floyd Roses, and I've got fixed bridge, and I've got you know, coil taps, and I've got all kinds of crazy stuff that I can do with all these crazy guitars I got. But what's the point of having all these guitars? Well, the point of having all these guitars is there is no point of having all these guitars. Um, the point is to have a tool. Uh, and the tool, such as an eight string, can do things the six string can't do and the seven string is kind of a compromise between the six and this and the eight string and probably bang for the buck probably as a writing machine the best writing machine you can get is a seven string guitar just because there's no limitations because you can even do your bass lines well the eight string you can even definitely do the bass lines Right, so you can hear more of the song in your head. But all that doesn't really matter if you can't write songs. So one thing I wish I knew when I was starting out right from the get-go was even though I was mo like most people are going to start out doing covers and you know you can you might learn music theory. First thing is to learn music theory. Uh, I know a lot of people think it's more challenging than it actually is. Uh, I'm not a master at music theory, but I'm constantly learning. I have been my entire life. Uh, I've read the rudiments of music. You know that piano book about that? It's like a binder style book. I've, I've read that thing like four times. And you'll forget most of the music theory and where, you know, how they... Like, you can learn music theory of how a... Uh, you know, the, like if you go to like a music observatory, they don't just tell you why, you know, that they're, you know, what the notes are, but they tell you how the notes were actually scientifically formed through resonation. And, you know, you'll see a diagram with a whole bunch of circles on it, you know, large circles and small circles. And, and, and you're like, what the heck am I looking at? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's how crazy you can get music theory uh, is... Uh, it can get pretty crazy. So you don't have to necessarily get to that. But if I was to really say, okay, if you're going to learn theory, obviously you need to visualize the fretboard or if it's keyboard, whatever it is, fingerboard, if it's like a violin, you have to be able to visualize that in your head. But the next thing, and this is probably if you were going to lose, uh, use music theory, obviously you're going to pick up chords and stuff like that. But even before scales, before finger tapping, all that crazy stuff, before really fast, you know, all that. That's great to be able to do that, but to know what to do when. The thing I would look at is obviously get as much music theory as you can, but one of the main things I would look at for songwriting is cadences. Yes, cadences. And that will open you up to, like, if you're a rock guy, you're going to play this all the time.
there's about 10,000 songs that you know in your head right away from just hearing that. Because it's the same cadence when I played here. Right? Everybody knows that cadence. Here's a very popular one. That's a cadence. What about... Uh, Right, uh, one, three, five. Every punk song in the world. Uh, the cadence is what allows you to kind of formulate a song in your head already. So, cadences and intervals. So, sounds pretty cool, but. Different intervals, so gives you something this different, right? Or same cadence, right? So the cadence is just basically uh, when you're looking at relative keys and stuff like that. And you want to pick out, say, uh, the key of C. Whoop. <laughs> Eight string. A year and a half later, I still, I, I, that was like some sort of a G, uh, G7 chord or whatever. I, my fingers just automatically think six string and it goes right to the middle of the neck. So your key of C, right? You can start off in the key of C, look at your uh, circle of fifths. You should have a poster of the circle of fifths on your wall. You really should. And you can see, okay, if I want to do a one, three, five, it's this, this, and this. Okay, and then you don't have to think about it. And the more you do this, uh, you want to do, like, say, a one, four, five, which is like a blues, uh, Nashville stuff, right, country stuff. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's, goes on, it goes on, and on, and on, and on. Um, you know, you can do uh, classical cadences, uh, blues cadences, all that. But if you have these cadences in your head, the one thing that happens is you instantly can hear it in songs. So it's like you're like trying to figure out a song and the guy's in a weird tuning or whatever, but you hear the cadence and it's like, okay, well, uh, he, maybe he's playing, uh, you know, just like, you know, the, the a one, three, five, right? Like a super song, punk song, but it's like in whatever, whatever it's in, in different, uh, different, uh, you know, different key, different tuning, whatever. And he's just playing it a different way, but you can hear the cadence. So then you know exactly what, all you have to do is figure out the first chord he's playing. Then you'll figure out everything else from there. Uh, but not only that, it allows you to do more than 1950s. Almost every song, whether it was slow or fast. 1960s. Almost every song, whether it was slow or, slow, slow or fast. 1980s. 1990s. Almost every song. Y you know what I mean? And, uh, or... That cadence, you hear that all over the place and rock pop metal you'll you hear those hear those all the time so it allows you learning cadences will allow you to uh you know you you'll need your circle of fifths uh to to make it easy for you but allow you to understand what's going to sound good with what and you can almost write songs in your head just by learning that and i wish i but was told that on day one and the next thing i should have been told uh when i first started is write original songs right from the get-go, which I did after about a year and a half of playing 45 years ago, 40, well, 40, 43 and a half years ago, <laughs> right? Because I'm 50 now, right? But the point I, I, uh, I, I'm telling you is that the whole point of playing these crazy guitars and everything like that is, you know, why are you doing it? Well, you're doing it to make music. So learn your intervals, Stuff like that, and then learn your cadences.
all the same cadence. There you go. And three different intervals.